In this video, I'm going to explain the main features of the Beat Helper plugin using the iMod Tutorial to Series dataset. When you start Beat Helper, make sure you leave Beat Fixer open. One of the most useful features of Beat Helper is Smart Scroll, which lets me use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down slices. Or, if I select a contour, scroll through these points instead. Now if I press M, it will jump to the C view. By default, this is set to the middlemost view, but you can change this under More Settings if you need. I'm starting, however, by explaining Beat Helper's visual aids. The first one of these is Show Estimated Position. And when I tick this, you'll see a little red cross here where Beat Helper estimates the fiducial should be on the selected view. Now, the calculation at this point is very crude, but it does help show an approximate position. It can be calculated in a number of different ways. Smart two points is probably a favourite, as it uses the position of the nearest two points plus the tilt angle. Now, if I press E on the keyboard, the selected point will move to its estimated position. Also notice this crosshair shows up larger on seeds where a point is missing. The next button is sphere size. This literally sets the sphere size of the object. It's hard to appreciate in this very small, simple data set, but this would be useful to work out where adjacent points lie. The next one is line display. Currently I've set this to all contours and it allows me to see the glance directory of all contours. I can also set display only those in the selected object or the selected contour. Now missing points is useful and it shows what missing points are based on the estimated position. If I press F, it will actually fill in the missing gaps between the two ends. If I press capital N, it will fill in the missing gaps, including those past the ends. So when you do this, I'd obviously recommend you scroll through and check these points. Point residual can be a neat way to try and see big errors. Line of best fit and smooth points I don't use much anymore. I actually find all contours is the most useful setting. Now in more complex data sets, you can sometimes lose fiducials, especially in high tilts. So the idea of tilt display is to display straight lines to use as a reference. Tilt axis displays a line representing the tilt axis, and you can mainly change the angle and position of this under more settings. Tilt axis and C projects a dotted line perpendicular through the C point, and tilt axis and point projects a third line through the selected point. Tilt segment shows four, four parallel lines that change with the angle, and H shows what I call the biggest hole grid. I'll explain that later. Now one of the downsides of these visual aids is it can crowd the screen, and so I very, very regularly use the sh iMod shortcut T to toggle the contour display on and off. As a preference, I always like to turn on centering so the point stays in the middle of the zap window. So what I'm doing here is scrolling through this contour, and after a few little corrections, I've decided that this contour is finished. Now U is one of my favourite shortcuts, as it allows you to toggle the contours as checked or unchecked, as shown by stippled or unstippled line. So the idea is if I scroll through a contour and find that it's pretty much perfect and it's got no missing points, I'll mark it as check to make sure I don't waste time and check it by checking it again accidentally. Next I should talk about these action buttons. Delete points in range is a button I can use in situations where one or two of my views are bad. So let's say my last two views haven't tracked very well. And so I'm going to hit this and choose to delete all points on views 60 to 61 from all my contours 1 through 20. Notice, however, as long as I have these options ticked, it won't delete any points from my checked contours. Now, we've hit enter, and we see in the output it's deleted 36 points. Now, if I press the shortcut key D, what it does is quite different. By default, D will truncate the contour by deleting all points after the selected point in the distance away from the C point. So this can be used to quickly reduce contours down to only those points which track well so as to better see the model ready to run track fiducials in a term again. If I hit R, it will reduce the contour to its original seed. And if I click this button, I can reduce all my contours to the original seed. Move points to estimated position is actually an interesting one. There's a number of options here. This window effectively represents smoothing options. And if I date these options and hit uppercase E, it'll actually apply those smoothing options and shift several points at once, which I'm about to show now. However, this can be quite dangerous. Typically, cross-correlation does a good job, so if you see a really smooth line like this, it typically means it's tracked well. However, sometimes there are deviations from smooth lines, and these are correct, and it's important you capture these deviations. Hence, you shouldn't rely on estimated position too much. A better method of correcting contours is using shortcut keys Y, B, and W. Each of these is fairly different. B searches all points and selects the one with the biggest deviation from its estimated position. Y selects the one with the biggest Y jump distance in Y from a point to its expected position, and W finds the biggest weighted dis 
the deviation in the currently selected contour, taking into account the distance between adjacent points. Now, by continually pressing B and Y and correcting points, it's possible to quite quickly improve contours before you even reach the fine alignment stage. Fill missing points can fill gaps of a range of contours. Read order contours is an interesting one. It's got many options. By default, it will sort the selected range of contours in ascending order of average Y jump, and thus the worst contours, the ones with the biggest Y jumps, will move to the end. We can also source them by the biggest average deviation, average gray value, the distance from the C to the middle, and so on. Now, if you get really bad tracking, you can actually reduce all contours to C, and just by reordering contours, you might get a better result. It's worth a try. However, that said, I don't, let's say I don't want to reorder my contours, but I do want to jump to the one with the biggest Y, average Y jumps. To do that, I simply press O. Now, each time I press O, it will effectively move to, to what I call the next worst contour, according to the selected criteria. I can also hit, if I want, another shortcut key is Shift-M, and that allows me to quickly move a contour to a different position in the array of contours. Let's look now, however, at mouse and keyboard settings. So here I can figure out what I want the mouse wheel to do, scroll points, scroll views, or smart scroll. This mouse wheel setting should always be set to 100 unless you have a dodgy mouse wheel. Now here we can change many of the settings for the shortcut keys, including the behavior of Y, B, W, M, and so forth. Enter, I find a particularly useful key. By default, I set this to go to the previously unchecked contour. And so I will only set contours with between 60 and 61 points, and this allows me to iterate through all unchecked contours until all of them have been either checked or I've deleted the bad points from them. Now as I go, I like to hit Shift-I, and this prints me a current summary of how many contour votes I've checked and how many points are missing. Now under More Settings, we can change the seed view. And you'll find that often the B axis, you'll want to reduce this number by one. Because when you transfer fiducials from one axis to another, it actually seems to put them one slice below the middle, even though it's not necessarily the view with the zero degree tilt. Uh, here we can manually change the uh, tilt increment. We can set the tilt axis angle and offset to display here. And below that is the biggest whole grid I was talking about before. And this represents a grid which can help us place evenly distributed seed points. And here I can change several display options. So here I might change the estimated position to display as a large diamond. Now finally I'm going to show you some of the actions I've got tucked away behind this More Actions button. The first one is Calculate Tilt Axis. This calculates the tilt axis, so let's just change it now based on a line of best through through all points. Now, most people have fiducial particles on both sides of the section. Um, now, notice in this range here, about 30 to 33, we can see some fiducials moving left and some are moving right. Now, if I go to show fiducials on top as purple and enter this range of views, I can use this to guess which, more or less uses this to guess which points are on which side. And this can help me get a more even distribution of points over the side. I can also, if I want, show a grid, if that's your thing. Um, but now I'm just going to clear this purple object. The next two options can help us split contours over multiple objects. I have these two options because B tracking can be very slow when you have more than, say, 120 fiducials in the one object. If you have several objects, each with, say, 20 or 40 fiducials each, they track more independently of each other and can yield a much better result. Uh, at the moment, these buttons are still a bit buggy, but I hope to fix that soon. Verify contours. Uh, corrects occurrences where you accidentally add multiple points to a single view or somehow draw a contour in the wrong direction. Uh, although Beat Helper generally prevents you from doing that nowadays. Mark contours as checked unchecked. I use regularly, um, especially after I've transferred fiducials to access B. You can actually also check individual um, points with Shift U, but that's usually more trouble than it's worth. And print contour gives the same output as shift I. Um, and that almost concludes the guided tour of Beat Helper, except there's one more shortcut key I haven't mentioned. If I press H, this allows you to jump to the spot furthest away from all other seed points on the seed view. And this can be useful to help ensure an even distribution of points. Finally, don't forget I've listed all of these shortcuts and explained most of the Beat Helper functionality under Help.